Why is it that the piano, one of the most common and popular instruments in Western music, is extremely uncommon in a symphony orchestra? Jason Hardink, principal keyboard for the Utah Symphony Orchestra, says that it's rare for his job to even exist. Auditions for these kinds of keyboard spots in orchestras rarely come up. I mean, there are orchestras, major orchestras, that don't really have a principal keyboard spot. It's kind of weird if you think about it. Like, how many bassoonists do you know? Even if you're watching this right now and you're a bassoon teacher, I feel like the odds are pretty good that even you know more people who play the piano. In this video, I'll be using Spitfire Audio's new BBCSO Piano Core. More about that later in the video. When you do find the piano in an orchestra, most likely it's in a piano concerto. And there are even lists people have made of orchestral works that include piano but do not feature the piano. You don't need to make a special list of orchestral works that include the violin. So why is such a common instrument being left out? And when it is included, how can it be used well? I think it comes down to one critical point, which was explained in a pretty grumpy way by Ralph W. Wood in a 1934 essay titled The Piano as an Orchestral Instrument. He says, there is something about the timbre of a piano hard, constant, impersonal as it is, which refuses to mix. He goes on to say, it refuses to mix with the strings, it refuses to mix with the human voice, it refuses, above all, to mix with an orchestra. So if we accept that the piano stands out, or refuses to mix, as Woods puts it, it actually makes sense that most of the examples of piano with orchestra are piano concertos. A concerto pits a soloist against the ensemble, and the contrast and interplay of the two is what makes it interesting. For a piano concerto, the fact that piano and orchestra don't blend well is a feature, not a bug. But there are composers who do use the piano just like any other member of the orchestra. And I think if you're mindful of that refusal to mix quality of the timbre, there are three ways that you can do it well. The first is to embrace it. If you know the piano is gonna stand out, then don't be shy about having it play its own thing. For example, in the very opening of Rachmaninoff's Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini, these big, powerful octaves in the piano are pitted against the strings. The strong contrast in timbre, as well as chords versus octaves, makes for a very dramatic and exciting introduction to the piece. <laughs> I want to point out here that the piano can be surprisingly loud. Listen to this clip from the opening of Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto No. 1. There are 10 wind instruments and like 40 or 50 strings playing, with just one person playing the piano. And even still, the piano sounds massive against the group. The second way to use the piano with an orchestra is for doubling, but of course we have to be mindful of how the timbres mix or don't mix. One approach is to treat the piano like a percussion instrument. So in this example from Shostakovich's second piano concerto, we have this chordal passage on the woodwinds. By doubling those chords with the piano, we give the winds a much crisper and harder attack and the effect is almost like adding chimes. The most successful doublings seem to come from the piano being used in the very low or very high registers. For example, in Prokofiev's Fifth Symphony, he doubles the piano and bass clarinet on this low line. Or this example from Stravinsky's Petrushka in a very high register. Notice that he's also using the xylophone here, which at that register has a pretty similar sound. Again, the idea here is to treat the piano like a percussionist. By the way, some of you may have noticed I've only referenced Russian composers so far. I think that's a coincidence, but maybe using piano with an orchestra was a very Russian thing to do in the 20th century. If anyone knows, please share with us in the comments. There's a third way you can use the piano with an orchestra. But first, I wanna say thank you to my supporters on Patreon and YouTube members for supporting the channel, and to Spitfire Audio for sponsoring this portion of the video. On June 29th, Spitfire released the BBCSO Piano, a classic Steinway Model D grand piano 
recorded in the BBC Symphony Orchestra's legendary home in Maida Vale. It was recorded with the piano in the same position you'd place it for a concerto, so out of the box, you can use it as if it's part of an orchestra. I found from playing around with it that it has a fairly soft sound, which is helpful for that issue of blend that Ralph Woods was so concerned with. It's being released in three editions, Discover, Core, and Pro. In this video, you've been hearing Core. Although Discover can definitely get you started if you're on a tight budget, Core gives you even more control over the sound and performance of the piano. If you want to hear Pro, check out the video with Paul Thompson on Spitfire Audio's channel, where he shows examples of piano in an orchestral context with a focus on cinematic styles. I'll put a link to that video in the description. All right, now back to our video. A third way we can use the piano with an orchestra is for background textures. In many ways, it's similar to how you'd use the harp, except you're not restricted by the harp's tuning, and you can pull off some more technically intricate things. A famous example from Camille Saint-Saëns who is French, not Russian, is Aquarium from the Carnival of the Animals. Let's look at two different parts. The opening uses one piano with arpeggios going up, and a second piano with arpeggios and passing tones going down. We get this shimmering, magical sound, which is very cinematic. <laughs> on we have this falling diminished triad figure which is an example of the kind of thing you can't do with the pedal harp that you'd usually find in an orchestra so in passages where you might want to use the harp but find it's technically unrealistic that could be a place to have the piano step in. I mentioned that even though it produces sound with strings, in an orchestra, it can be helpful to think of a piano as a percussion instrument. The problem is, people usually tell me that percussion is a section they are completely lost on what to do with. That's why you can't afford to miss this video here, where I use examples from Star Wars to show you how to actually use the percussion section. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.